What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the Fujifilm XS10 and pretty much my first impressions. Now if you noticed in the last couple of videos I purchased the XS10 but I was waiting until I got a little bit more hands on time with the camera before I make a first impression and it pretty much took me about a month to set up photo shoots, get some test video clips and you know to pretty much get some experience with this camera. So with that being said let's get into the specs that I care for. 200 megabits. It shoots F-Log, it's only 8-bit Kodak, so for the video features it does lack a bit, but when it comes to the photo features, it's nearly identical to the Fujifilm X-T4, except it shoots slower in burst mode. Also the IBIS in this is a little bit weaker, but it don't really bother me. So let's start with the video, especially F-Log. I edited these clips in DaVinci Resolve with no LUTs, no third-party plugins, just from scratch. Now when it comes to 8-bit Kodak, here's what most YouTubers will say. It was that you can't grade it, it falls apart very easily, which it really does. You know it's unusable, this and that. But the thing with F-Log when it comes to 8-bit or just log period that you have to learn how to color grade it. You can't just slap a LUT on there and say, oh, my footage is falling apart, I can't use it. I seriously think a lot of YouTubers do not know how to color grade outside of what they was taught by another YouTuber. Now, if you watch channels like with Kaz Kazi or Sydney Baker Green, they will show you that you can actually edit 8-bit Kodak when it comes to log footage. You just have to massage it into place. You just can't go in there full speed ahead and thinking that you won't break your image. I think another issue is that a lot of people on YouTube try to color grade their footage, like they're color grading raw footage, and that is a big no-no. And that is because even though you're shooting in the log Kodak and it's retaining so much information, it's almost like you're shooting with or trying to color grade a high and premium JPEG image. Now what I mean by that is, you have an image, you have more latitude than most other cameras JPEG because you have so much information in there, but you still have your limits to what you could do to that image. And that's pretty much what log is. Now if you can color grade raw, which I never did before, but my friend Lenard did with Michigan Streets and Eats, you know, what you could do with raw Kodak is pretty much endless. So like I said, when you color grade 8-bit Kodak, like I said, just massage it into place. You have to take it easy because just forcing some colors into place or trying to force your image to look a certain way, you will destroy your image before you even get to that point. Now I think this camera is perfect for smaller projects like YouTube, real estate, music videos, talking head segment, interviews, you know, something like that where you don't necessarily need 10-bit Kodak. Now, if you hook this camera up to an Atomos Ninja V, you will be able to record 422 10-bit via HDMI. Now, outside of F-Log, it has the same film simulations that you can find in the Fujifilm X-T4, the Fujifilm X-T3, the Fujifilm X-E4, and all the newer cameras that Fuji has released. Now, I primarily bought this camera to be a B camera to my X-T4, but honestly, it's starting to become my primary camera for vlogging, for photography when I'm on the go, and when I don't need a 10-bit Kodak, because I don't need it all the time. And actually using the XS10 will actually help me speed up my workflow when it comes to releasing the YouTube videos as well. I'm also loading this camera up with film recipes, which are the images you're seeing now. I shot those with Porsche 400, but I do have another one on here as well. Now when I switched from the X-T3 to the X-T4, I had a much easier time learning and operating the camera because the buttons are almost in the same layout as it was on the X-T3. But with the XS10, it's a totally fresh design. So it took me a minute to really learn this camera for my muscle memory to kick in so I can actually know where certain buttons or certain dials are at. And we all know that this new design is actually geared toward the new videographer, the new photographer who's come into the Fujifilm system and want to give everything a try. Which if you pick this as your first camera, I would not be mad at you because it is a beast. Now like the ST4 I'm shooting now, Fuji used to make their cameras to become nostalgic of old film cameras that old pros used to use back in the day. But with the XS10, it don't have that design. This is more modern, this is more streamlined with its competitors. Like I said, this is for the new photographer or videographer coming into the ecosystem and wanna learn how to use this camera pretty fast and not have to worry about the dials, the shutter speed, the ISO dial, and all of that. Now, this camera does have IBIS and it's not as strong as the XC4 IBIS, but it's still really good. And when it comes to good IBIS, you do not know what good IBIS is until you shoot with a Panasonic camera. That's just my personal opinion. Now this camera only had one SD card slot. That do not bother me because I had two SD cards fail on me at the same time in my Fuji X-T3. 
Now let's recap on some of the things I like. The 200 megabits, the F-Log, the film simulations, the custom dials that you have on this camera. And I love the IBIS. This left dial right here actually lets you switch between your film simulations. And if you hit the Q button right here, it tell you what those film simulations are based off of. I love that feature. Now, what I don't like about the camera. I don't like that it don't have a D-pad, only the joystick. I wish it was 10 bit, only in 200 megabits per second if need be. I wish these custom dials also worked in video as well. And I don't like the battery life, of course. But overall, this is an amazing camera, especially for sub $1,000. I recommend this camera to any hybrid shooter that is looking to get into the Fuji ecosystem, but not spending a lot of money for something like the X-T3 or the X-T4. Because with this camera, you're pretty much getting a miniature X-T4, but in a new design. So thank you to all the people who checked out this video. Thank you to everybody who stuck around and thank you to the new subscribers. But before you go, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new content. Have a good day. Peace.